guys welcome back to my channel this is betty owner and creator of betty's custom designs here on youtube etsy facebook and instagram so today i am actually creating a journal um my sweet mother-in-law requested that i make a journal for her for um her sister using my roses are red um digital kit so that's what i'm doing and i've already kind of got just a couple of things done or prepared just so that the video won't be quite that long i've already got my um my papers cut that i'm going to be using for the envelopes so it's just five papers um these are cut at eight inches by eight inches and so this is the um envelopes and the other things that I've already um, prepared is I've already got my um, my front cover and back cover cut out, as well as my spine. Um, and I just went ahead and pulled the stuff that I will be using, um, the score tape, my glue, um, the corner protectors, that kind of stuff. Um, so we are going to just go ahead and get right into it. I need to just go ahead and start um, creating these envelopes here. And so, like I said, I've already um, cut them, already put them on my um, envelope scoreboard and pretty much got everything prepared as far as that goes. So now it's just this, you know, actually folding and creating the envelope. That's the only thing left to do for these for now. Um, there's always plenty to do. So I hope you guys are having a good day, a good week. It's going pretty good for me. I cannot complain because nobody listens to me when I do complain. So I'm not going to complain. <laughs> so it, it has been a crazy busy week and a weekend for me, but that's the normal. So yeah, I'm just trying to get all of this done. I hope it, I hope with me, um, going ahead and making, cutting the envelopes and making them that um, the video won't be quite so long. Now, she doesn't really want me to um, embellish or decorate it up much. Um, she wants to be able to do some of that. So, it's going to be um, a very basic, and I didn't cut the tab off of that, so I'll just do that in a minute. It's going to be kind of a basic um, envelope journal, ephemera storage. Um, I love the roses, though. Oh, my God. Goodness, I love them. Y'all know that roses are just my thing. Yeah, whenever I get into like a creativity block or something, I always just go back um, to pink and roses. And it kind of helps get me out of my little block. Because those are the things I am the most comfortable with and that I enjoy the most. Now, I am going to, um, whenever I put the envelopes in, after I have sewn them into the journal, I can put them in a couple of different ways. I can either glue the envelope shut or I can use um, score tape. And so, I think... We may just glue these in. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm happy they all look to be the same size, which is a plus, you know. So now let me just get this out. And again, just want to make sure that I cut it right because Lord knows I am probably the world's worst at cutting things the wrong way. And I'm just trying to see if I have a old, <coughs> excuse me, an old thing of washi tape over here that I can use to um, 
pull the stuff down with, but it doesn't look like I have any. It's all good stuff. So it's okay. We're just going to go with it. All right. So the first thing that I always do, and normally I have my, um, I work on my glass mat, but I do have it covered today. So we're just going to go with this. And I'm just trying to find the end to my washi. Let me see if I can get you guys. I mean, let me slide this this way a little. Does that help any, I wonder? Okay. So what I'm doing is I am just tearing washi tape up. That's what it looks like. And I am just going to use some washi tape to hold this a little bit. And I want to try and get it as even as I possibly can, top and bottom. And then I'm just going to put my washi right there. And you can choose to leave the washi on or you can take the washi off. Um, a lot of times I just leave the washi on because it's not going to, it's so thin you will never even know that it's there. So I'll just leave it on. And it get you know it just adds a little bit more support. So I'm going to do the exact same thing down here. I want to try and get that space the same on this side as I had on the other side. And it's looking pretty good. And there we go. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to flip it over, and then I'm going to take my Tyvek tape, and this is the stuff that I normally end up sticking myself all over with, and everything that you can think of, I normally end up sticking it to this. So I'm just going to cut a little strip off, and then I am going to just... Set it right there. And I do not want it to get down on my, my paper mat because it will cling to it and never come up. And this is some very good tape um, to use on your book bindings on your um, binds because this stuff is hard to tear. Um, so it gives a lot of stability. And I actually, I also use this Tyvek in the envelopes themselves. Okay, so as you can see, there's the um, beginning of our journal. So let me set that to the side for just a moment. Actually, let's go ahead and cover this. So I want to use this for my cover. And thankfully, it is going to be perfect, so I'm not going to need to cut anything down. So what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to get um, my Tyvek or my score tape. And I'm going to, because like I said, I do like using the score tape on this. So I'm going right around the edge of this um, journal. And I've done it right there at the edge of the front cover or back cover, whichever one this may be. I'll do the same thing on the spines. I'm not going to put anything right there down that um, seam, I guess you would call it. So when I use the um, score tape, it does take a little bit longer. Um, but for me, I have found it's worth it. I like... Um, I like the way the journal comes out when I use the score tape. And I also, I do also use um, Fabri-Tac, even though I'm using the um, score tape, I will use the Fabri-Tac as well. Um, it just gives me a little bit more peace of mind. And so I am just getting this tape right on the edge. 
and I'll show you how we're going to do that. This, it really doesn't take that long to do it with the tape. And the thing is with the tape, I don't have to worry so much about um, the dry time, even though I will have some glue in there that I will have to worry about, but it won't be that bad. And so how many of you guys have actually um, made one of these envelope journals that you've seen me making? Um, if so, I would love to hear about it. I'd love to know how it turned out for you. Um, if it is something that you will make again. I just completed a custom order and um, I got a flip through of it Friday on my YouTube channel and that one was totally outside of my comfort zone or wheelhouse. It was, um, I think she called it retro anime or something like that. And I didn't even have a clue what it was. She had to fill me in and send me photos. Okay, so now what I'm going to do before I do any of the glue, I'm going to go ahead and peel um, the back off of all of this tape. Because if I glue and then try to pull the back off, I will end up um, being part of the journal because I'll be stuck myself down. I have done that a couple of times, so I learned from experience to just go ahead and pull this off before I put glue down. So that's all I'm doing right now. Sorry about that, guys. My mother called and it just cut the video right on off. So, yeah, I'm just pulling this off. Almost done doing this part. And this cover here is actually the one that takes the longest to do with the um, score tape. The other, the other parts of it that I use score tape on doesn't take long at all. So, once I get done with this little section, it'll be pretty quick. And you can see I'm already like struggling trying to keep from sticking myself to the the journal even now. And this little tool that I'm using, I picked this up at um, Dollar Tree and I believe there was two of them in the pack for a dollar. And it works perfect. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my Fabri-Tac and I'm going to put it in the area uh, between where I have the score tape. And down along that spine there. And that's just, uh, I don't know, that's just like extra insurance to me. It may not do much, but it makes me feel better. And then I'm going to do it right at the end there of that. Okay. And now because right now it doesn't matter which way our paper's up, I'm not even going to worry with that. So the one thing I'm going to do is I want to try and center it up as much as possible. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to flip that over and get my little glue spreader, epoxy spreader, whatever you want to call it. I know I've said it many times. This is what I've got. I bought these from um, Hobby Lobby. And I, not Hobby Lobby, Harbor Freight. And I love them. They work wonderful. And this is not something you have to do. It's just, you know, I'm just trying to check on the fold and all okay and so now I am going to kind of just miter the edges or angle the edges and then I got that one almost too short 
And then the other thing that I do, uh, just always do, is, you know what, we're just going to use these. I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to glue the um, corner pieces that I um, cut off of the envelopes. I am just going to glue them down to the corners of the covers, so that way, if there's any piece that's showing, what you'll see is the actual printed pattern paper. So that's all that I'm doing right there. And I could have just used the pieces that I cut off of the um, cover, but they weren't too big. And these are just sitting there and I didn't think I would be using them for anything else. So let's not waste them. That's all I'm doing. Let me tell you, I cleaned my Fabri-Tac bottle yesterday. Oh my God. <clears throat> Let me tell you. I ended up with glue all in my bathroom sink, all over me. I, it was, I should have videotaped me doing that because it would have been one of those for funniest home videos. I don't know what I was doing, obviously. Okay, so right now, all I'm doing is coming down and I'm just scoring along the edge of the um, cover. And that's just so that I can go ahead and prepare um, my paper to be folded. And I'm just gonna fold it just so that it's ready to get, especially this one since I cut it a little short. It's not too bad though. Oh, this is the one that's bad. <laughs> okay. But we're going to make it work. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I am actually going to get my um, thin score tape. I believe this is the one eight, And I am going to do it right along the very edge of this end here. Okay. And then I do like to take the quarter inch and do that on the inside edge of the actual cover. And now that I have that, I am going to go ahead, just press down real good, make sure it's adhered real good. And I am going to take the um, plastic backing off or attempt to. Okay. Now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to put it right up against the, um, the book area there. And that's where I'm going to put my glue. Okay. Now on this one, because I did cut it so short, I need to be very careful and make sure I get it folded really good and so I am going to fold it over onto that tape that I have on the inside there and then because I have the glue it's going to take a minute to hold down but that's okay because I would rather have the glue and it take a couple extra minutes because I don't want it coming up at any point in time. I want it to stay down. Okay. And so it did cover, thankfully, so it didn't hurt it. And now I'm just going to do the same thing here. This is the quarter inch, so I am putting it on the inside of the actual spine. And I can see where this is trying to come up. So this is what I'm going to do while I am working. I thought I had some more of these right handy, but I don't. And then I'm going to take my eighth inch 
and put it along the edge right here. So as you can see, it really doesn't take long at all. And if I was just gluing it all down, it would take less time, but I do feel better having the tape on it. Okay, and so we're just gonna do the same thing that we did before, right along that edge there. And then we're going to bend it over and press it down. And this one went down better because I didn't have it quite as short as I had the other one. But it will all be fine. And so now we just need to do the same exact thing on the top and bottom part. So I'm going to take my 1 8 score tape and I'm going to get it right there on the edge of the actual flap. And then I'm going to take my quarter inch and you could do the quarter inch all the way or you could do the 1 8 all the way. It doesn't make a difference. It's not going to um, matter one way or the other. That is simply personal preference. I think I put too much glue, but oh well. Okay, so again, we're doing the same thing. We wanna go ahead and pull this up, the backing off of this piece of tape. And we wanna pull the backing off of this piece of tape. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. I don't know why my glue done that. We're going to glue right against that, um, the cover itself. And I'm gonna put a little glue all over that flap. And then we're going to fold it up and over. And I will make sure that I press it down really good. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing to this part. And on this, it doesn't matter that I go completely over, over the spine with the entire piece of tape. That's perfectly fine. That's not a problem at all. And then again, right along the very edge of that flap. And I try to get it as close on that edge as I possibly can. Okay guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. My mother called again. And whenever somebody calls, it just cuts my recording off. Okay, so now that we have the cover completely covered and it looks so pretty and I'm just scoring a little bit right along where that um, line is that it's going to go down just so that it might hopefully make it a little easier when I go to close it look how pretty guys oh my goodness I love it okay now the next thing we need to do is we need to measure our inside. So it is measuring 10 and a quarter. So I can actually cut my paper at 10 inches and then it's measuring six and a half. So I'm going to do it at 10 inches by did I say six and a half? See, I'm losing it. Okay, ten, six and a half. So I'm going to do my paper at ten by six and a quarter. 
So let me get this little spot off. I don't know why my printer, it reset. And whenever it did, it's now um, printing everything with the border. And I don't like that. Okay, so I said six and a quarter. And I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to kind of take that one out. And then I said 10. Okay. And set that to the side. Now, the one thing I do want to do, I always do before I glue it down, is I just check and make sure that my size is correct. And then I do like to um, round the edges on my inside. To me, it just makes it look a little bit more finished. And again, this is all personal preference. You do not have to do this. And now with this paper, because it's a non-directional paper, it doesn't matter which side I have up or down. Um, but if you are using a paper that um, is directional, make sure that when you go to um, put it onto your cover, make sure that you have the direction of the paper going the way that you want it to go. And so all I'm doing here again is I'm just taking the score tape and I'm going as close to that edge as I can possibly get. And I'm going all the way around the outside of it. And again, you know, it's just, it makes me feel better when I have the score tape on it. Okay. And just making sure it's all pressed down. And then I am going to put some score tape in the middle areas of it. And you don't have to put it, you know, to where it's completely covered in score tape. Just put enough that you feel comfortable. All right, now I'm just gonna scrape it all down, make sure it's down good. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull the backing off of this tape, maybe. And like I said, if I was gluing this, it you know it wouldn't take as long. Um, so you absolutely you can glue it and glue only. That's not a problem at all. It's not going to go anywhere. Just make sure you use a you know, a good glue because it's going to have a lot of weight to it once you start loading your pockets and that kind of stuff up. But other than that, it doesn't make a difference. Um, it's just a personal preference whether you glue it or use tape and glue or tape only. And so again, the same thing, I am going to take my glue and go in between the area where I have the score tape. All right, and now I'm just going to bring my cover back. And again, because this um, paper is not directional, it does not matter which way I put it on. But I do want to make sure I have it as centered as I possibly can. And there we go. And then I'm just going to smooth it all down. Okay. And then I do like to feel right along where that, um, that spine area is. I do like to find that, and I do kind of like to just score down it a little bit. Um, I can't, you know, I don't always do that, but it is something that I do prefer to do so that whenever I
It just kind of goes ahead and gets the paper prepared to be folded. Okay. And sometimes, depending on how it is, sometimes the this will crack, and if it does, it's not a big deal. I'll show you how to handle that. All right, so the next thing that I always do is I add my corner protectors. And again, this is something that is just personal preference. You do not have to do this. It is just something that I like. And the one thing I always do when I do add a corner protector is I always put a little bit of Fabri-Tac inside of that. That's like my little insurance. <laughs> and then when I put it on, I put it on the corner and then I try to make sure that it gathers and grabs um, everything that it possibly can on the inside. And then once I do, then I mash it down. And when you're using um, whatever tool you use to mash it down, make sure you're using something that does not have. Sorry guys, my mother called again. So hopefully I can finish this video now, but we'll see. All right, so again, I got my Fabri-Tac down. I'm putting it on there, getting it as much in there as I can. Making sure everything's the way I want it. And then I squeeze the tabs down on that corner protector. All right. And so you can see how that's looking already. I love the way it looks with those corner protectors on it. And uh, I just love this kind of stuff. All right, so let me put this one down. And again, just making sure I get it all the way in there. Making sure I grab as much of the inside of that book as I possibly can. And I went a little crazy with the glue right there. What did I do with my paper towel? I don't know. So his hands work just fine. <laughs> One more. So, the same thing. Just making sure to grab as much as I can. And once I'm happy with where it's sitting, then I can clip it all down. All right, so there's that. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and put the little um, eyelet in where my um, elastic will go. And I just get out my little big knot here. And I use the largest hole and I just kind of eyeball what I think is the center on the back um, cover and then I change that set my eyelet in here just like that and then I bring it over carefully put it in there and then set my eyelet and just like that that part's done so now, while I'm right there, and well, I should have done it while I had my big bat out, but oh well. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I have this little template where I've already done some holes. Um, I am just going to go by this template, and I am going to make my mark for the holes that I need to punch. And you can use a marker or anything like that, because the thing is, you're going to be punching those holes out, so it's not a big deal. 
and I use mine there um, because I use five envelopes. I they are um, spaced at a quarter inch apart, and I'm just trying to make sure that I keep you know my um, my holes in line as much as possible, even though I always or almost always cover my back spine I still like for them to be even just for my own peace of mind and OCD all right and so let me try my big bump back out I should have done it all at one time now on this I put it on the 1-8 and I am just going to go through and poke those holes. And some of this, sometimes this can be pretty difficult even for the big bat to go through because you got to realize I have that chipboard. Then I have the Tyvek tape. And sometimes, you know, this Tyvek tape is actually doubled. It may even have the washi tape behind it. Then it has score tape and glue and then paper. So sometimes this can be a little tricky, but it's okay. And I'm just getting these holes done. And we are very close to being done. Um, this is the stuff that just kind of takes the longest. That's a little bit more meticulous. Um, again, none of it's real, per se, difficult. It just... And then the more you make of them, the easier it becomes. Um, it's not... It doesn't involve nearly the thought process that it does when you first start making them. And so there are our holes. So now we can concentrate on the envelopes for a little bit. I'll set that to the side. I'm going to get my envelopes out. Now one thing I do like to do on my envelopes is... I like to put a little closure. Let's go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry guys, I got a coffin. Okay, we are just going to go ahead and put the um, Tyvek tape on the inside spine of the um, envelopes. And that's just so that it gives it some protection. Whenever I poke the holes, that it's not going to just rip the envelope. And so I always like to do that. Um, it just makes me feel better. So that's all I'm doing right now. And I have found through trial and error that the easiest and best way for me to put the tie-back is to do just a small piece like this and cut it in half. And I don't stick myself to the tape nearly as much as I did. And as I say that, I'm stuck to the tape. That just helps um, when you poke your holes. It just gives some added protection there. So that's all I'm doing here. And like I said, this is what takes the longest for me. Just doing this kind of stuff. But this is the kind of stuff that makes your journals last longer um, because they are paper even though they are a cardstock it's still paper 
you're poking holes in it. Um, so it just gives that little bit of added protection. This one and one more. Here, I'll see how I end up always sticking myself to this tape. And I do have um, this tape linked below. It's actually for like carpet and walls and that kind of stuff. But this is some good stuff. Um, I need to go ahead and probably order another roll. And I think I can order a thinner roll, and I may do that, order like a smaller roll just for the envelope spines like this. Um, I don't know. I'll just have to look at the price and see if it's worth it for me to do that. All right, and that's done. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out the order that I want to put these um, envelopes into my journal. Because the next thing, is, which is pretty much the last thing since we're not really decorating, is just sewing in our envelopes. So, let's see. I want that one first, maybe that one last. How about that? Okay. Hard decision, wasn't it? <laughs> so now what I do to sew them in, I take my first one and I line it up with the holes and I figure out about where I want it to set from the top and from the bottom. And I think I want it right about there. And so then I just make a little mark on the envelope where I need to poke my hole. So over here I have five pieces of waxed um, string and I have my needle and it's not a sharp needle. And then I have this little awl. And so be very careful doing this because um, it is very easy to pick yourself. And I'm just going right there on those dots and I am just poking a hole right through there, right in that fold. Now that I have that, we will sew our first envelope in. So now the fun part is threading my needle. I need to get some bigger eye needles. I think I have, I may have some bigger eye needles down there. I need to look and see. Okay, and to sew it in, I'm just making sure I'm going in the right direction. I put my needle through that middle hole and then the middle hole of the journal, um, the cover. I bring it through and I leave myself a little tip and I kind of hold on to that so I don't pull it through. Then I come up here and I go through the top hole and then the top hole of the envelope. And I bring my um, thread on the right side of the little tail that I have hanging out. I go through the bottom hole, pull it through Okay, and now I'm going to go back through the middle hole. Now, when I go through this middle hole, I want to come up on the opposite side of the um, that long thread going down the middle. So, as you can see, I want it to come to the right of it, whereas the tail that I left is on the left of it. And make sure when you do that, make sure that you do not poke through um, your thread on the um, on your tail, because if you do, that will give you some problems for sure. And then I just tie a good like double knot in it, 
and then cut it off. And if I was using tape, which I think I'm going to use tape. So let me just put this tape down real quick and then I'll go ahead and put the tape on the others. So again, I'm just going right along the edge there. Okay, and then there's that little bitty tiny spot. It probably wouldn't matter if I got tape on it, but for my peace of mind, I'm putting a little piece of tape there. And so I'm just putting that little piece of tape down. Okay. And so now what I need to do is just pull this tape backing off. Then I'm gonna close the envelope like that and then just press that tape down. And there we go, that one's done. So real quick, let me just go through and let me put the tape on all of these because it's easier to do it when it's outside of the journal. And it won't take us but just a minute and we'll be done with this part of it and we can finish sewing in the envelopes very quickly and we'll be done so as you can see they it doesn't take too long to do these um, what takes me the longest is actually deciding what paper I want to use um, which ones I want to use for the envelopes, which ones I want to use for the cover, and then embellishing it takes me a while because, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what I want and how far I can, you know, how much I can load up in there without it being too much, and so... That's just... The actual uh, construction of the journal is doesn't take much at all. So I will probably get in touch with my mother-in-law and see if she wants me to bring this on over this afternoon. So we shall see. I haven't seen my mother-in-law in probably a week or so. And we normally see them about once. We actually, you know, it's probably been two weeks because we were out of town. Okay, so let me put these back in the order that I had them in, which it really doesn't matter because they're all about the same. So it won't make a difference one way or the other which one I put where, but... We're just gonna, for my sake, we're gonna go ahead and do it like this. Okay, so now I have this one. And we're back to taking the envelope, folding this down. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I line it up with the first envelope and line it up with the holes. And then it's the same thing. I'm just making a little mark right there where I need to poke my holes. Hold it back over on itself. Get my arm and very carefully poke those holes. And I say very carefully because I've learned a couple times that I'm not as careful as I should be. And it hurts. And you know what, as many times as I will tell you guys to be careful, I promise you, I will probably end up sticking myself many more times to come. I just don't seem to learn. 
So again, we're going in that middle hole, middle hole. Leave myself a tail, go in through the top hole, and top hole, come on the right side of the tail, go down into the bottom hole, bottom hole, and now coming through the middle hole, middle hole, and come on the opposite side of the main string. And then we're just going to pull tight and then do a double knot. just taking these off and fold this up and push it together just like that there's our second one so now let's get our third one exact thing. Just going to line it up with the other envelopes. Make my little mark. And then poke my little holes. string now let's do it again middle hole middle hole top hole I know there's a top hole top hole <laughs> And then stay on the right side of that tail, bottom hole, bottom hole. Back through the middle hole. And come up on the, it looked like I was almost through that string, so I pulled out and I'm gonna do that again because may not have been, but I'm, just wasn't positive that I wasn't. Okay. And now I just want to pull tightly and then do a double knot. Backing off. And then close it up. And that one's done. So, two more envelopes, and we will pretty much be done. So, again, just lining up as evenly as I can, marking it, and then poking the holes. Now it's 
just sewing it in again. And so the way I'm sewing it in, this is how you can sew in your signatures on any of your journals. It doesn't have to be envelopes, um, whether it be paper, you know, where you've done the paper signatures with the many different types of papers. You can sew it in the exact same way. Um, we could have taken this very same um, cover and sewn in some um, signatures that were different papers rather than doing the envelopes. Um, so once you have the basics down on, you know, creating covers or how to sew in, um, the sewing in of signatures, you can do all sorts of different um, journals, um, books, that kind of stuff. So it's just mainly getting the basics down and then just going with, from there with it and making it your own. Okay, let me do this a little, do my double knot. This is, I mean, we're so close to being done. And that one's done. One more envelope. So I'm just doing the same exact thing that I've done. Just lining it up. Make them a little mark. Poking my hole. Oh, that's a big hole. And then sewing it in. And I'll have one more string. There we go. And the length of my string that I use for my signatures, I normally cut it to be about three times the length of the signature that I'm sewing in. And that's just to make sure that I have plenty of, um, plenty of string that I can work with. And it doesn't have to be that long, but it's just, I've found that's what makes it easiest for me to work with it. Um, I do have waste, as you can see, when I use that amount of string. Um, but it just, for me, it's worth it because it just makes it a little easier on me. And then up through the middle, come on the other, oh, I almost went through that string. Come on the other side of the string as the tail. And then tie a double knot. Okay. And now I just need to pull the tape backing off. And then close it up. All right, so our it's pretty much done, as you can see. Uh, the, I do want to put some stuff on the um, on the envelopes to hold the flaps down. And the other thing I want to do is add my closure. And so I am using elastic, and what I'm doing, I've got this flat wooden button that I am going to use. And that will keep my um, elastic from pulling out. So I'm just threading my elastic through that, keeping it straight. Okay. Then once I have it the way I want it, which I've got way too much on this one side, so let me pull some 
elastic back. Run away, Betty Renfro, run away. Okay, and so once I have that done, what I like to do is make sure that I have my button where I want it, and then I'm gonna take Fabri-Tac and I'm going to just put it all over the back side of that button. And this is why I use the Fabri-Tac, it's because it will hold on wood. And then I just wanna make sure that if, again, if my um, button is directional, I just wanna make sure that I have it facing in the correct direction. And I do. And so I'm just gonna hold a little bit of pressure on that until it sets. Okay. Now while that is setting, I am going to take um I don't think I had enough of one of those. I am going to take this right here and I am going to make a little, um, you cannot see, I know, and I apologize, I'm just cutting a strip that is about maybe two inches. No, I think I normally do like three inches wide. It's three inches wide, maybe. And then I am going to cut five strips at half an inch because this is what I am going to use to hold, not half an inch, three quarters of an inch. I do apologize. This is what I'm going to use to hold the um, envelope flaps down. So that's all I'm doing right now is and I normally try to, you know, use something that's contrasting to the envelope itself. So that's five. And I am going to just round the, um, the corners ever so slightly. Just a little bit. It just seems a little bit more finished and polished when I do that. Almost done, guys, I promise. I'm so sorry that this video has taken so long. I just wanted you to be able to see the entire process of the making the journal um, from pretty much start to finish. I tried to have stuff prepared, but you know, there's some things that you just cannot prepare for. But it's okay. And I think I'm just going to glue these on. I think it might go a little faster. So I'm just going to take my glue right here. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this end and a little bit of glue on this end. And then I line it up and then press it down. Same thing with this one. I'm just going to line it up and then press it down. And I just like the flaps being held shut like that so that they don't bend. Um, or if you have stuff in your um, little envelopes that you don't want to fall out, it just gives it a little bit of added security um, that they're going to stay in there. And that's all there is to it. And then just 
just trying to make sure I keep it straight. Last one. All right, there we go. So those are done. So now that our um, button is pretty well dry, we are going to come over here and we are going to tie our elastic. And we want it tight enough to kind of hold it good, but we don't want it too tight because you know we're going to be adding stuff to this. And so I think that's about right. All right. And then, so the next thing I'll do is just add some little trinkets or charms onto that. And other than that, this journal is done. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.